Hey everyone, I'm Caroline Vizana and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are just joining me, my name is Caroline Vizana and I'm the author and founder of Making It in Manhattan and a style and beauty influencer from New York City. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I started my career in the editorial world working at places like Teen Vogue and InStyle and about two and a half years ago I quit my job, left it all behind and became a social media influencer and fashion blogger. So today we're going to be talking about five ways to become a fashion blogger. I feel like in today's world a lot of people are interested in how to become a fashion blogger, how to grow a platform on social media. And it is very, very oversaturated right now, but I do think it is possible, especially with these five tips I'm going to talk about, to leave your mark and to break into the industry. So let's just dive in. So before doing anything, my first tip is to find your niche. As I said, the industry is very oversaturated right now. So think to yourself, what am I bringing to the conversation that isn't already being said? What can my platform be about that might be different from somebody else's? You don't want your platform to be exactly the same as someone else's because what fun is there in that? I think the beauty of this industry is that you can build a brand and build a platform all based on being yourself. I mean, for me personally, I love color, I love mixing prints, and my platform is very positive and uplifting. So I get to say that I built an entire brand, platform, and lifestyle all around just being myself, which is so much fun. So find your niche, find your brand message. Find that before you do anything. Don't just try to jump into it before really solidifying what you want your brand message to be because then I think things can get a little bit confusing or overwhelming. If you can streamline your thoughts and find one thing or two things, think to yourself, what in fashion do I know a lot about? What am I very knowledgeable in? Do I know a lot about accessories? Do I know a lot about styling? Do I know a lot about maybe vintage shopping? I think that's a very, very interesting topic right now. Um, so think to yourself, what do I know that maybe I could give to someone that they want to know? How can I help people? I think thinking of yourself as a service, how can I help people? What can I give to people? For me, I love sharing my career advice since I did used to work in magazines. I think that's something great and valuable that I can share with my readers. So find your niche, find what you are going to be talking about, and really hone in on that. And then create a brand message. I would actually take the time to write down a brand message, um, a mantra, a motto that you can then, while you're working each and every day, look back on and remind yourself, this is why I'm doing this, this is what my brand is about. Once I came up with the idea for making it in Manhattan, I wrote down a motto and I thought to myself, this is what my brand is about. So once I did that though, I didn't just want to launch my site and make the announcement of my brand without having any content to show because if you make this big announcement on social media, oh I launched my blog today, a lot of people are going to go look at it, but you want to make sure you have content on the blog for people to see because That'll keep them coming back, especially if they go there the very first time and they're like, ooh, I love this content, this is great. You know, you don't want to announce it for the first time, people go and then it say, oh, coming soon. I think you should bank content. So, for example, what I did was I wrote maybe three to five articles, I did a couple of photo shoots, and I had all this content ready, and then on the day I launched my website, I posted it all. So it looked like the website was already meaty, already a little bit put together, so that when I made this announcement, I had something on the site to show for it. I also made sure that I had a subscribe box from the very first day, so that I could start to build a readership right from the very beginning. So I think come up with your niche, your brand message, figure out who you are and what you are going to add to this oversaturated blogger world, and then bank your content, prepare for launch, and then launch. That's my first tip. My second tip is collaboration is key when starting out as a fashion blogger. I cannot tell you how many articles and things I've read about I went broke trying to become a fashion blogger or I spent all my life savings trying to travel the world and become a fashion blogger. If that's the case, you're doing it wrong. Because when you're starting out, collaboration is key. Find the people who you can collaborate and work with on a budget. 
when I was first starting out, I didn't have tons of money that I could throw at expensive photographers, you know, designer clothing, things like that. My tip for photographers is, in the beginning when you're just starting out, you're a small guy, you're a small blogger, you don't want to be wasting hundreds of hundreds of dollars on photography, but you still want to get amazing content. So with that being said, if you can reach out to maybe an up and coming photographer, even a student in college, for example, I'm in New York, so a student at FIT, Parsons, NYU, who's maybe studying photography and who is up and coming and would just and who would just love to grow their book and to grow their portfolio, reach out to them and be like, hey, I'm an up and coming fashion blogger. You know, I'm trying to just build my name and get some content out there. Would you want to work together in exchange for trade? Trade meaning, you know, they could use the pictures in their portfolio. You can use them on your Instagram and also credit them, of course. But it's a great way when start, uh, it's a great thing to do when starting out personally. I think it's a great thing to do when starting out. That's what I did when I was starting out. I collaborated with so many different photographers. We all had this understanding that we were all helping to promote one another and it was an amazing way for me to save money. And also, I mean, at the end of the day, I still made sure that all the pictures they provided me were the raw images and were unedited so that I could personally edit each image to match my feed. And my feed is very, very colorful. If you haven't seen my feed or follow me on Instagram, it's at Cvazana. Um, but I made sure all the images were raw images so that they could all still work on my page and fit my feed and it didn't, it didn't feel like I was shooting with a million different photographers. So that's my first part of collaboration is key. My second part of collaboration is key is there can be this unspoken pressure that you need to be shooting a different outfit every single day and you cannot wear the same thing twice and you know there's so much pressure surrounding it and that's why I've read these articles of these girls you know spending so much money and and going broke trying to become bloggers and that should not be the case so things that I can tell you that I did personally that worked for me when I was starting out the first two things is vintage shopping go to a vintage shop where things are like five to ten dollars and take the time to go through every rack I think the beauty of vintage shopping is it's all about these treasures. It's like a treasure chest when you walk into a vintage store. You just need to take the time to look through every single piece to see what's there. And, you know, you, I promise you will walk away with some gems. Vintage and consignment shops. That was my second one. Consignment shops, vintage shops, amazing when you're just starting out. My second thing is really challenge yourself. Have fun with your wardrobe. I mean, I'm sitting in my closet right now. That's where I'm filming this video. And I think the beauty of it is, especially as a blogger and influencer, is to show your followers that you can wear things multiple times if you just style them in new and creative ways. I have items in here that I've had since college just because they're super fun and I love them. And I wear them a million times. If you follow me, you'll see there's certain boots I wear all the time because I love them, but I style them a different way every single time, or maybe a jacket or maybe a blouse. I have certain items that I love and that I cherish and that I wear all the time, so I don't think you have to wear something different every single time. So those are the first two. The third thing I'm going to tell you about, you know, clothing and shooting is reach out to designers. And I'm not saying go reach out to Chanel. I'm not advising that. Don't be like, oh, Caroline Vizana told me to reach out to Chanel. No, that's not what I'm suggesting. But reach out to smaller up-and-coming brands smaller PR firms, things like that, maybe who would just love to have you shoot their clothing. It might only be on a borrowed basis, which is okay when you're just starting out, you're just trying to grow, or they might be wanting to gift you product. So be open to, you know, working with these brands and stuff and borrowing clothing and shooting. You know, the hustle is so real when starting out. So, you know, fight for what you want, do what you need to do, and you know if you if you hit the ground running and work really hard it is possible and also if you maybe have a friend who's an influencer there's no reason why you guys can't share clothing you know maybe borrow a dress from her she'll borrow shoes from you whatever it might be that's another beautiful way to create more looks without having to spend money so that's my second tip 
My third tip to becoming a fashion blogger is network, network, network. I think when you're first launching and starting your brand, it's so important just to get the word out there. So obviously there's so many blogs out there, there's so many influencers, so many people, but the only way you're gonna grow and get your face seen and to land paid collaborations is by networking, meeting people, and having people learn about your brand. I think the only reason why you're maybe not getting a collaboration is, or something is because someone doesn't know about you. They don't know who you are, they don't know about your platform, they don't know about your brand. I remind myself that all the time, even now some days if I'm getting looked over for a partnership, I just remind myself, well maybe they don't know me, maybe they don't know about my brand, my message, and what I'm doing. So network, network, network. So that could mean sending out five to ten emails a week to different designers, PR firms, even other influencers who you admire and asking them for coffee. I can remember the first couple of months of when I first quit InStyle and was on my own trying to build a brand as an influencer. I went to so many coffee meetings. I all day long I felt like I was at a breakfast meeting, a coffee meeting, then a lunch meeting, then you know happy hour drinks meeting. I was just meeting, meeting, meeting with so many people to let them know hey I'm doing this thing, I built this brand called Making It in Manhattan, I have a book coming out eventually, you know how can we work together, how can we make some magic and things like that. So. I think it also does not hurt at all to reach out to influencers who you admire. If there's someone whose platform you love and you love what they're doing and you know, you're just curious, hey, how did you grow? How did you grow your platform? I would love to take you for coffee, you know, for 30 minutes one day and just pick your brain. I think that's a completely fair question. I, I do coffees all the time with up and coming students, you know, who want to be influencers and things like that. So I think the only way that you're going to learn is by asking questions. So go out of your way, push yourself out of your comfort zone, and network, network, network. Especially if you're invited to an event, that's the opportunity to network and to make sure you leave with a couple of you know, business cards or new connections in your pocket. My fourth tip to becoming a fashion blogger is to use all of your platforms, all of your resources, and to be open to opportunities. So when you're growing and you're trying to get your name out there about your blog, or your Instagram or whatever it might be, don't just focus on one social media platform. Don't just focus on Instagram. I think it's so important to take advantage of Facebook, Pinterest, um, YouTube, Twitter. I think it's so important to cross promote all of your platforms across, you know, each and every one of your social media channels. So I think that's a great way to grow. I think sometimes we don't take advantage of that as much as we should, or maybe in the beginning we feel timid to be promoting ourselves across Facebook and being like, go look at my blog, go look at my Instagram, this, that, and the other. It can feel a little, you know, oh, I'm promoting myself, I'm bragging, whatever it might be, but you're trying to build a brand. You're trying to get your name out there, and you're also promoting content that serves a service. So it might be, how to wear plaid, how to wear floral, how to, you know, build your platform on social media, um, whatever it might be, how to become a blogger. I think don't be afraid to share, 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 and to use all of your platforms, all of your networks, you know, think of ways that you can get your name out there that maybe aren't super obvious and in your face. And then being open to any and every opportunity, and this is kind of jumping off of, um, number two that we spoke about a little bit when I was talking about reaching out to de to when I was talking about reaching out to designer showrooms and things like that I think being open to opportunities even if in the beginning when you're just a small little guy starting out being open to you know maybe just gifted collabs and you know even if a brand invites you to their showroom just to shoot some product I think being open to every and any opportunity is so important because you never know where one might lead even if you're doing you know just a gifted campaign no one has to know it's gifted first of all they might think that it was a paid partnership especially when you're starting out but because you're posting for that brand you never know what other brands might be seeing it and that could then lead to another opportunity another project so you never know what opening yourself up to could lead to and I think that's one of my biggest things and I was recently doing an interview and someone asked me how I measure success and I loved that question because I think in this industry especially when you're starting out and you're a small little guy it's not all measured on monetary money success um, for me when I was first starting out and I only had 10k 
one of my biggest successes that I was so excited about was nylon.com um, was writing an article about how to become a fashion blogger funny enough and wanted to interview different bloggers and they reached out to me and I was so shocked I thought that no one knew who I was no one had ever heard of me but the editor reached out to me and she told me that she followed me and loved my platform and things like that and I'd never met her before I was so extremely flattered and when the article came out my picture was the lead image of the whole article so I think things like that especially when you're a small guy just starting out and trying to get your name out there you need to be open to every opportunity send good vibes into the universe you never know what opportunity is laying just around the corner so i can't stress it enough do not get discouraged when you're starting out i think it's so 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 easy to look at bigger platforms and other influencers who are bigger and to feel extremely discouraged and like you'll never get there and like you'll never be able to accomplish it but i'm telling you you will if you're positive and you work really hard and you hustle and you network and you're open to anything that might come your way, I promise you, you will be successful, but you just have to not give up and you have to keep going. My last tip to becoming a fashion blogger, and this is probably just the most important I can tell you, is just go for it. At the end of the day, you know, there'll always be an excuse. Oh, it's not the right time. Oh, I'll do it next month. Oh, I need a little bit more time to, you know, I don't know, create more content, take more pictures, whatever it might be. I think there's never a perfect time. There was never a perfect time when I quit my full-time job. There was never a perfect time when I wanted to launch my book. I think that there's never a perfect time, but you just need to go for it. You need to just dive right in and start because that's how you start going, that's how you start growing, that's how you get your name out there, so I cannot stress enough. Go for it, go for it, go for it. You will be so happy you did. Those are my five tips to becoming a fashion blogger. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a comment below if there's any other topics you want me to cover, and see you soon.